Now, when it comes to isekais and power fantasy series, we marvel at the fact of the main MC turning from a TikTok star to a flat as justice regiment commander. That's why we love series like Solo Leveling, Overgeared, and I was reincarnated as a hot spring in an alternate world and I'm way too effective. Uh, sorry. My VTuber bathwater is spilled all over the script and that last title got added in randomly. But despite all the fun these series spurs about, from adventuring through vast green pastures to getting introduced to some S tier waifus, we have to ask the question, what is it really like for a hero to return back to his real world after their adventure is said and done? In the case of FFF class trash hero, we may never know, but with this new series I'm bringing to the table, Hero has returned, shit got dark real fast. It's then as if Sung Jin Woo and Guts did a Dragon Ball fusion, and then Jojo's Dio eats that fusion and shits it out into Chainsaw Man's hell. But if y'all pick out the series, you guys are gonna be pioneers, cause there's literally only 6 chapters out and this series is catching some major steam in the manhwa community. Huge ups to my subscriber, Alpha Star RU, who introduced me to the series. You a legend for this one. But y'all, let's stop stalling and talk about one of the darkest manhwas I read in 2021. This series is first fixated on a hero named Kim Min Su. After being transported to another world by our pal Truck Kun, Min Su quickly adapts to this world despite the extreme circumstances. The very possibility of him being able to return to his own world was the very hope that helped him embrace the role of hero. So after 11 light novels later, 3 anime seasons, 1 feature film, and 20 boo mouse pad releases later, Minsu was able to defeat the world's demon lord and return back to Seoul, Korea. Now typically with stories like this, it's a happily ever after situation. You know, you might get a new series out of this, such as a hero from another world returns and opens a Korean fried chicken spot in his hometown. But in this case, <laughs> it was more like a hero from another world returns and gets fucked in the ass. I thought I was reading Goodnight Poon Poon the webtoon, cause I've never seen an isekai hero in my life go through so much shit in my lifetime. To back it up a little bit, after being isekai to a different world, Minsu was gone from his old world in Korea for a 8 month period. In that 8 month time span, his mother died while handing out missing posters of him, and his father committed suicide for feeling inadequate for not being able to save his family. And then once Minsu gets isekai back to his old world, he gets abandoned by the rest of his family, he gets isolated from his old friend group, and he even gets expelled from his school. So essentially, he had no family, no degree, no social life, and no me. Now you gotta kind of feel for this guy, cause he just came back from a world where he was the savior. And then he arrives into this world, and he gets treated like how Sho Tucker treated his daughter. He was treated like a cockroach and complete scum. And when you see Minsu go through all that, and you see that one panel of him in broad daylight in the middle of a busy intersection in Seoul, just looking up into the sky with that fish eyes, I swear I've got the chills. Cause these were the eyes of someone that lost absolutely everything in life. And he officially became broken when a bystander started to ridicule him. You know, we act all gangsta until an isekai hero summons a blade longer than a North Korean nuclear missile. Then my man goes full genocide mode and the father full metal alchemist brotherhood character arc officially unlocked. And y'all, this was dead ass all in one chapter. My dude, how you go about squeezing in the whole book of revelations into one mono chapter? Like god damn! Now, I don't want to ruin any more for y'all because I want each and every one of you guys to experience this series for the first time. I think the reason why this series was so powerful to me was that it taps into something we typically don't explore when it comes to the isekai genre. Like, it's all fun and games with the majority of the journey because you got the hero making these different big brain moves and whooping everybody's asses. But very rarely you get to explore the story of the hero after he returns to his old world. 
Call me a pessimist, but I feel that most isekai heroes that return back to their old worlds will find it impossible to readjust to their old lifestyle. Imagine fucking clearing whole ass dungeons, beheading demon generals, and traveling with some S tier babes. And the next thing you know, you back in your own world working 80 hours a week in the cubicle next to fat ass Rebecca who shoves her face with a whole ass chocolate cake every day at 3 p.m. That shit will make you go nuts! Apart from the mass destruction the hero caused, I was also fascinated by the micro focus of different characters affected with the hero's return. This series does an excellent job of balancing the macro and the micro implications of the hero's havoc. And this series is art. <laughs> this on some solo leveling art level, y'all. The level of hatching and cross hatching for different panels is absolutely flawless. Art panels of full landscapes is a whole ass Michelangelo meal. And I don't want to ruin it completely, but when the savage hero killer comes into the picture... <laughs> I'm gonna tell my kids, this is the real Percy Jackson. There is a deep level of impact from the depressive tones of this series, with an absolutely refreshing take on the isekai hero journey. If you love seeing characters' limbs being ripped off, end of Evangelion despair, and seeing all of humanity in complete jeopardy, Hero Has Returned is the perfect series for you to pick up. Anyways guys, you know, we just hit 30k, thank you for the support y'all, cheers to the next 30k, keep it coming, love you guys, this has been your boy Yee Man, peace out.